swollen blooded beasts of the jungle to the shimmering scales of reptiles in the trees. Bright colors in contrast will help hide figure flaws. According to Gotchek, these suits have about 20% more lycra woven into the fabric than the industry standard. A higher proportion, they say, than you'll find in the fabric of any other swimsuit manufacturer. The Gotchek strip is tighter and sexier. They won't sag, snag, or unravel even in rough surf. Maybe that accounts for a price tag as high as $250. Several of these suits are by Viewpoint, another line in the Gotek tribe. Since normal people fall short of perfection, Gotek designs a conservative version of each suit, even cover-ups. And believe it or not, Gotek is the leading exporter of swimwear to the United States. Their stylish swimwear can be found on the beaches of 63 countries, including Lebanon and Jordan, where they appear without the Made in Israel label. Although these countries don't agree on much, politics obviously doesn't get in the way of great-looking swimsuits. So the average two-piece suit was made of 30 square inches of material. Well, today, they don't even use half of that. Hanging on the wall of this beachwear business is the only designer Cody Award to ever be given for swimwear. Elan has always been a trendsetter and a leader in the swimwear market. Their designs have been featured throughout the years in high fashion magazines like Cosmo, Vogue, Redbook, and Glamour. Monica Tilly designed suits for the woman who doesn't have a perfect figure. Finally, we all breathe a sigh of relief. These suits help make a woman look thinner by providing a little more coverage. A sneaky way to conceal some figure flaws in some classically elegant designs. towards more fabric should help Missy designs look a little more contemporary this year. That's good since most of us shudder at the thought of getting into a swimsuit and going out in public. Elan of California has been manufacturing top quality contemporary designs for 39 years. Ironically, that's about the same age as their customer. Elan's metallics have a more sophisticated look than their youthful bright patterns. But the lines of these suits draw attention away from your hips and towards the center of your body for a younger, slimmer look. Prices begin at about $40. For most of us, swimsuit season starts months before we're ever seen on a beach. We put on our slips in March and don't take them off until May. But believe it or not, there might be an easier way. Nobody's perfect. Everyone has figure flaws. But according to swimwear designer Ann Cole, certain patterns and colors can have an incredible impact on the way you look. Do some suits fit some women better than others? For example, if you have a small bust or a big bust, is there anything you can do? I mean, you should ask that question. I think that most women worry more about the way they look in the bus line than almost any other area. But um, there are suits with shirring in them, for example, a lot of pleating or shirring or high-waisted suits with, you know, seams under the bus line. They're probably better for the small busted woman to make her look like she has more. A sleeve suit that's cut high in the leg actually makes your legs look longer. This style is called the Maya. It was originally introduced in France. You see, French women have notoriously short legs, hence the French cut suit. 
the best way to hide figure flaws in the legs and hips is to wear sarong to camouflage everything below the waist. But if the problem isn't a serious one, choose something like this two-piece suit with a skirted bikini brief. It draws attention away from your hips and towards your tummy. For women who've had children, often their stomachs are a problem, even though their best lying legs are fine. This year, there are a slew of one-piece designs with soft gathered pleats around the middle. It hides a lot without looking like that's what it's trying to do. It's fun. I mean, it can be fun. I, I wish women felt better about the swim scene so that they enjoyed the way they look, even if they don't feel they're perfect, because, you know, nothing is perfect. I mean, you might be perfect, <laughs> but there are like a few of you, and there are little secrets that women should look for in a swimsuit. If you want to wear a bikini and you have a figure for it, hats off to you. You don't have to have a perfect body. Just stop eating. For me, I can't afford to eat unless I wear one. After watching a show like this, later you could agonize over the way models look in bikinis. But the fact is, 81% of the 34 million suits sold last year were one-piece designs. And where were they worn? On the best beaches in the world. St. Martin in the Caribbean is an island of French and Dutch influence. It's known for its clear blue water and beautiful beaches. With more than 200 days of sunshine each year, St. Martin sets a tranquil tone for anyone who wants to avoid a crowded beach. Fort Lauderdale, Florida is the number one destination for college students on spring break. But don't come for serenity, come for excitement. Healthy bodies in pursuit of sunshine and romance. Three months out of every year, this is Party Town, USA. When we come back, Sophisticated and classic are words that might best describe the East Saint Laurent swimwear collection. The use of draping in the YSL line helps conceal a woman's imperfections. Not that these girls have any. Saint Laurent began at the age of 18 when he was hired by Christian Dior after Dior saw some of his work. Now in 1962, he left to open his own salon. And now the YSL initials can be found on everything from children's clothes to eyeglasses. And of course, these sizzling swimsuits. The bikini was worn in the first Miss World pageant. But after that year, the pageant officials decided to scrap the idea. The public felt it was too risque. It wasn't until Rita Hay was posed in the scandalous suit that the bikini finally gained public acceptance. This is that famous photo of Rita Hayworth. In fact, it was photos like these that created the concept of the pinup girl. As part of the war effort in the 1940s, pinups were produced to boost the fighting man's morale overseas. Hollywood made another contribution to the swimwear industry by the name of Fred Cole. Cole was a silent film actor who went into the family business only to turn part of their textile mill into a swimsuit factory. The first suits were made of wool and later from parachute cloth. The rest, as they say, is history. Lava still pours from the heart of Kilauea, reminding us all that this island is still growing. The La Blanca collection for 87 has also grown. Three years ago, they were a barely recognizable name in the swimsuit industry. Today, they're the top-selling contemporary swimsuit line in the country. While other companies had been ignoring diet-conscious females in their 40s, La Blanca began offering stylish swimsuits for an older customer. This woman has fun, not fear, when she picks out a swimsuit. Today, 
older women can and do look younger. But Blanca has capitalized on this fitness frenzy by updating classic designs with plunging necklines, offering contemporary bikinis and one-piece suits with very high-cut legs. The only concessions they've made to age is that they've cut the bottom a little fuller and offer slightly more sophisticated patterns and fabrics than you'd find in most junior lines. According to the brains behind LeBlanca, a 40-year-old woman doesn't want to wear a junior suit, but she also isn't looking for suits with skirts or hard breast cup construction. This woman keeps her body in shape and wants to sew it off. They must be right because in the last four years, sales have increased 10 times over. This year, they expect to sell a record $25 million worth of swimwear at about $35 a suit. If it it's true that you're only as young as you feel, the LeBlanca collection is perhaps the most appropriate fashion finale to a one-hour show that's almost over. Oh, the beach. The sun in your face, the wind in your hair, the the sand in your suit. Sunset Beach on the north shore of Oahu is Hawaii's most infamous beach. This is the home of the Bonsai Pipeline, a tempting but treacherous foe for any surfer. Those who survive its thunder find that Sunset Beach is second to none. Just off Australia's Great Barrier Reef is a place that few people have heard of, fewer have been there. Orpheus Island is a remote location. Its overwhelming beauty and peaceful demeanor qualifies it as one of the ten best ways to escape civilization. Well, I guess that wraps it up for our Swimsuit Edition 1987. The girls did a great job. But you haven't said a word the whole show. Is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> Great. Goodbye, everybody. Travel arrangements for the Swimsuit Edition 1987, provided by United Vacations. For your next vacation to Hawaii or the Orient, ask for United Vacations. Hotel accommodations for the Swimsuit Edition 1987, provided by the Hotel King Kamehameha, rich in Hawaiian history and ideally located on the big island of Hawaii. Ground transportation in Hawaii and Los Angeles, provided by Budget Rent-A-Car. Well, the swimsuit portion of Sunday Showcase is over, but you'll hardly notice because we're going to journey to the Caribbean and expand our horizons as we look back on another classic summer. From the shores of the Caribbean, hi everybody, I'm Mike Chamberlain, here with a show that we have entitled Another Classic Summer. In the course of the next hour, we will take you to beaches all over the world and show you some of the most classic sports going on this summer. Sports like surfing, bodyboarding, jet skiing, and windsurfing. So buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, and get ready for another classic summer. Yeah! Jeez, I love this job. Surfing was considered a power sport, but then it dawned on somebody that there was as much finesse and style and grace involved as there was power. Well, that's when the sport opened up to women, and today they have their own professional tour, and one of those that travels on the circuit is Kim Merrig from Carpinteria, California.
see for every 500 men I see in the water, I'll see one woman. And, and to me, this is a sport that's tailor-made for women. I'm curious about your thoughts. Why more women don't surf? Um, I think a lot of times in California, the best surf is in the wintertime, and it's cold, and there's a lot of elements and stuff like that. And I think that pushes a lot of the women away from it. But now, more and more, it seems like this is the growth of women surfing and competition and all that. And the more publicity it's getting, I think a lot of women are more into it now. I think there should be more, too. <laughs> Can you maybe look into the future? Where do you think the sport is heading? Um, pretty much in board design, we're pretty much at the peak. Of my shaper even thinks so, too. He thinks that we're pretty much as far advanced in the shape hmm. of surfboards. We've gotten as short as we can go, and we tried every amount of fins on the boards and mm -hmm. stuff, so we're pretty much at the peak of what we can do right now. And it's just a matter of pushing the levels on the short boards. Is, you know, people are doing, you know, aerials, which exactly. is pretty incredible and things like that. And pretty, it seems like there was a big thing with aerials, and now it's back to just solid carving, powerful surfing, and that's pretty much the ultimate right now is just pushing the basics of the surfing which is the basic cut back and, you know, bottom turns are pushing it to see on. And that, Tim Merritt, the credit to women's pro surfing, has done. In ocean sport that packs thrills and plenty of spills is body surfing and here at the Wedge in Newport Beach, California, enthusiasts enjoy waves that come in from the south during the summer, roll along the Newport breakwater and form a mean A-frame type tube peak, which breaks in about two or three feet of water. I might add, we caught the Wedge at a relatively small summer day. The wave faces sometimes jump up to 20 or even 25 feet, but even at 8 to 10 feet, it can be very dangerous. A mistake here could cost you your life. Another action-packed ocean sport, and one that could be one of the fastest going, is skimboarding. Those that have taken up the sport have enjoyed the variation of stunts and tricks, which can be done with the combination of sand, wave face, and skimboard. Would you believe that people used to use pieces of plywood or stop signs to skimboard in the old days? And by the old days, I'm talking about the 1960s. But now the boards are high-tech, and they are built to maneuver. And ladies, enjoy the sport, too. Skimboarding, a sport that's kind of like surfing, kind of like skateboarding, and can be a lot like diving. You know, a summer would never be a classic one without a beach beauty contest. Stay with us. Unforgettable summer memory.
At beach sporting events during the summer, most include a special side attraction. One that seems to turn out thousands for a lot of smiles and good fun is a beach beauty contest. Probably the largest and most well-known is the Miss O.P. at Huntington Beach, California. And here are four summers worth of classic highlights just for you. Another classic summer would not be complete without beach volleyball. On any given summer weekend, thousands of people will show up at a volleyball court to watch the best in the world compete. And that includes a young man named Leif Hansen from Laguna Beach, California. Have you ever tried to run or jump in the sand? It's not easy. Well, Leif, who grew up on the beach in Southern California, is physically fit, and he's doing very well, thank you, on the pro volleyball circuit. It's a fast-growing beach sport with competitors that earn respect for their abilities and stamina, and enough respect to draw huge crowds. Volleyball in Southern California, especially around the beaches, uh, is a prime sport. You know, it's, it's just like football or basketball or baseball in other states and uh, other areas in California, like Northern California, but it's a, it's a big sport here. It's one of the biggest sports. Actually, in our high school, it's probably bigger than any other sport there was there. So you grow up playing it, you know. It's, it's, you grow up watching people play this tournament. When I was a kid, I grew up watching this tournament. You know, it's the oldest one, the Guna Beaches. And, uh, you know, you see that, you want to be out there. It's a lot of fun. You know, it just, in other countries, it's uh, number one sport, number two sports, and, you know, I mean, 10, 20, 30 other countries you know, in this world. It's just been, uh, for some reason, USA hasn't caught on as fast as the other countries have, but I, we're hoping that it will, and it has caught on a lot faster in the last 10 years, progressed a lot, and I hope it will keep on going that way, too. I want to play as long as I can. I've said before, until I'm 30 years old, but really, until my body allows it, and I can stay in competitive shape, play against the best players, and, and be, you know, on the top, I think it's going to grow a lot more. I want to get involved with some of the growth and, you know, with my sponsors, the Talk for Key for Oakley Eyewear, get with them and maybe, you know, start my own company, a clothing company, or somehow stay involved with, you know, the beach volleyball tour circuit. 
and what have you. It takes a toll on you for the weekend, and uh, it gets it, it, it takes a lot of energy to keep going, keep going for the whole weekend, and to finally win a tournament. You know, and it's a tough thing, and I I think that if everyone comes down and watches it during the weekends, or sometime they get the chance to see it on this show or other places, that they'll be really excited and, and have a good time. My idea of the class, <laughs> the classic summer, is uh, a lot of nice weather like it is here. A lot of Going to California, going to the beaches, having a good time, playing a lot of volleyball, winning a lot of money, <laughs> and more or less just uh, traveling a lot, seeing a lot of different places, meeting a lot of new people, and having a lot of fun. We've been looking at jet skiing, mainly flat water racing and freestyle, but there's a lot more to look at. Now, there are a group of guys who have taken jet skiing one step further. They actually take their jet skis out into the ocean, and they ride waves. They are called the Wave Busters, and they are led by Randy Lane. Ooh, yeah, got it. I've been racing motocross and surfing, and I kept breaking bones and getting tickets on a motorcycle, but I didn't want to give up the speed. So I got a used jet ski from a friend of mine and uh, started doing that, and it was a combination of... Uh, riding waves and jumping waves so it was, it was like i was still in motocross but it's just water motocross so it's been uh, it's been unbelievable it's it's the most fun i've ever had flat water uh, jet skiing that's what the jet ski was designed for was flat water ocean or not the ocean but lakes and rivers um what's happened though is the guys on the coast have taken them out and found a whole new freestyle sport so the majority of the guys who are, are what i call legitimate jet skiers on flat water would definitely uh, have to start out with some caution in the surf because it is a lot more dangerous and it's all timing. If you hit the wave wrong, you're going to come off the ski and possibly get injured. So I advise people to learn in flat water with a good instructor and ride carefully and you've got to build up to it. It's like anything else. You know, you can't drive an Indianapolis car out there 200 miles an hour without instruction. Because of Randy's love of surfing and jet skiing, and because of his popularity with the beach crowd, he and a few experienced champion jet skiers started the Wave Busters several summers ago. Well, the Wave Busters, actually, uh, we had a team of guys that had formed by accident, and we were doing exhibitions at surf contests, and all of a sudden we started getting people calling us up. So now we have sponsors, and it's a legitimate uh, team, and we actually get paid to do the exhibitions. You get an adrenaline rush from the crowd, but once you're actually in motion, you forget about it. You, it's almost like uh, the crowd's not there. You're, you're moving so fast, and you're watching the water, you can't take your eyes off the water ever because you're reading a map that's constantly changing. Uh, the ocean is constantly in motion, so if you blink for a second and miss something, you're going to go down. With the classic summer, uh, sun every day, no clouds, no rain, Lots of beautiful women on the beach, and about a four to eight foot swell. Now here is a sport that I know you can identify with. It's played at beaches and parks all over the world. You know the sport as well as I do. It's called Frisbee. The game of Frisbee is simple enough, and for most people, it's purely recreational. But wouldn't you know, there's some people that take it seriously. Recently in La Mirada, California, the U.S. Open Flying Disc Championships were held. This premier event draws competitors from all over, including California, Florida, and even Japan. This is the freestyle event. The competitors show expertise, grace, and precision. Two or more participants combine various throws, spins, flips, and even dance, choreographing it to the music. All of this adds up to one absolutely phenomenal show. Probably the most brutal yet exhilarating event of the day is called Gut, which got its name from a college daredevil stunt of tossing a six-inch circular saw blade. In this game, one five-person team throws to another 
the goal being destroyed with such speed that the other team is unable to catch it. Hacksaw Reynolds would have been great at this. And the Japanese team does all right. But the day wouldn't have been complete without a little spectator participation. The huge crowd gathered together to display their own talent, setting a new world record for the most Frisbees aloft at once. Frisbee is a sport that's been associated with humans, which seems like forever. But there's a new animal that's come on the scene. Right, Dino? I hear you, my man. Certainly the most entertaining event of the day stars man's best friend, the dog. I talked with Peter Blurm, owner and trainer of Whirlin Wizard. I think Frisbee is a fantastic uh, uh, sport and exercise opportunity, uh, especially between man and dog. It creates a bond, it's good exercise, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, most people think of Frisbee dogs as a dog will just run out, jump up, and catch it. And that's terrific, but really there's a lot more that can be done. Uh, the front flips, the back flips, tapping the frisbee back to you, uh, catching a frisbee end over end, whirling, simultaneous moves, distance, jumping over your back. So there's really quite a bit that you can do. He looks on it as, as something that's real fun to do. And uh, he wants to do it because he pleases me, not because I have given him any treats or anything. I've never given him a food treat like Wizard Sit, here's a treat. I said, Wizard, do you want to play frisbee? He goes, yeah, let's go do it. And uh, so he, he really loves playing the frisbee. I think my ideal summer would be uh, playing on a manicured frisbee uh, golf green and playing freestyle with my dog. Smash ball. Now here's a sport getting extremely popular on the beach. And while we were out shooting on an overcast summer morning, we found a vicious interstate smash ball championship taking place. Hey, let's meet the competitors. Steve, Beach, California. Nancy, Long Island, New York. The challenger, Nancy, has been preparing for this match with exercise and practice, showing extreme smooth form. And our self-designated smash ball champ, Steve, is confident. You can see he knows that the match is going to be won by him. He's already ordered the trophy. Now you're looking at the prelims. Nancy had just a phenomenal preliminary round, keeping Steve completely off balance. Now watch this. Steve makes a backhanded stab at this one. Nancy comes in for the ding shot. And watch it fall. And then she points at the judges. She says, that's fair. That's fair. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The moment we've waited for. And that's point. A quick exchange inside. Steve sends it back. Nancy looks up. It's an overhead pass. Steve dies. Can I get it? Or Nancy's arms go up in victory. Here it comes again in slow-mo instant replay. Steve makes a valiant effort at it, but the story is written all over his face. And Nancy, from Long Island, is our smash ball champion, proving that there's better smash ball being played on the East Coast. Okay, stay with us for an exciting look at beach fashion. Got to be amazed at how far this sport has come and the type of stunts being pulled off. I'll tell you what, I'll shut up and let these guys do the talking. Beachwear has become a billion-dollar-a-year industry. Let's face it, folks, you don't want to show up at the beach unless you're wearing the right thing. Well, here's a few of the right things that you'll see at the beach on any classic summer. Swimwear has definitely come a long way this century when you consider how the suits looked in the 20s or even the 30s. Nowadays, there are high-tech designs by people who make it their business to know what people are wearing at the beach and coming up with ideas on what will be worn in the future. 
women's swimwear has gone light years ahead. We've, we've gone from a pretty, uh, let's stay out of the water, let's just look good on the beach kind of attitude in swimwear to performance, to swimwear for the girl who's active, swimwear for a girl who plays volleyball on the beach, who body surf, who surf, who wind surf. And that has reflected in all of our designing, that swimwear is now active and very performance and equipment oriented rather than let's just look great. We market much more than fashion. We, we're marketing a lifestyle. And oh, what a lifestyle it is. Tropical sun, turquoise water, beautiful ladies. A lifestyle lived or envied by billions of people. Karen Mistal, know the name? Maybe not, but I'm sure you'll recognize the face. She has taken beach fashion modeling to new heights, even to the silver screen. And you've probably seen her on many music or summer fashion videos. Modeling and acting kind of went hand in hand for me. I um, was fortunate enough, my dad works at Eastman Kodak in Rochester, so I started modeling at 16 and 17, you know, doing things like that. And when I came out here to make a living, I modeled full time. I started out doing a lot of uh, videos, I think, for MTV and somewhere. And the thing you always hear the, uh, the old saying, she must be dumb because she's wearing a swimsuit. <laughs> doesn't really know what she's all about. But I don't know, I, I, I had a real good time doing all of that. Um, I think it was definitely a stepping stone because it's exposure for you. You're getting out there and it's not poor exposure, it's, it's great exposure. And we did shows like Sumer Illustrated 87, um, which was Clean the Sweets on ABC. I mean, it was a great show. Living in California, I mean, you know, you're health conscious, body conscious. So it kind of tied in with, with modeling and therefore with acting. Well, most recently with acting, um, I'm doing a series with 20th Century called Bean Saxter, the airs on Saturday night. And presently, you're on the set of The Killer Tomatoes, a sequel 10 years later. It's a new world release, and this stars John Aston and Steve Lundquist, uh, Tony Stark and George Clooney, and myself. And it's a great crew and cast. Um, John DiBello is the director and one of the writers on the show, and it's uh, got a plot this time, folks. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, I play a tomato in this. John Aston creates me in his laboratory and I'm turned human form. And um, kind of, I relate it to the part of Dale Hannah and Flash or Kelly LeBrock and Weird Science where everything's new to me and um, I'm just learning about life. It's going to take a lot more dedication from here on out because now I'm, I'm put in situations where I have a lot of, uh, a lot of things to do and I have to prove myself. Class December doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing on the beach and eating a lot. So don't go away, we'll be right back. No se vayan, volveremos pronto. In any language, it's time for a commercial.